me to sleep. So hello everyone and welcome to a live show. This is the Extrava Benza live show in celebration for my reaching one of my goals. Um, and I'm joined here by some absolutely amazing authors. We have a mix and mash diverse group. We've got debut authors, we have indie authors and we have published authors here to talk to you guys. So please do leave comments in this video or there's the little Q&A bar thing which I think you can click on, it takes you through to Q&A. And also if you want to tweet any of us on Twitter, all the Twitter links are down below in this video. And just tweet us, ask questions, use the hashtag extravabenza and just come and join in the fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say and just pick randomly and let the authors introduce themselves. So we're going to start off with Jennifer. Hi. Who so, is your? Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my ben. God! I hear myself. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, at least we know it's actually live now. <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> so Ben's got my beautiful book there, and I have a copy with me here as well. Um, I'm Jennifer Wilson. I am the uh, indie published author of the young adult dystopian novel in the world rising. I'm just coming um, joining. So, that's me. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say <laughs> randomly <laughs> <laughs> and I hear me. Hi. So, I hear me. Oh is it gone? Okay, cool. Sorry. Um I hear myself. Sorry. Oh god I hear myself again. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody got the uh, video open? Who are, is everybody wearing headphones? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. No, I'm, I'm not wearing headphones. Should I be wearing headphones? <laughs> uh, only, if, only if you want to have the video on in the background. If you don't want to have the video on, it should be fine. There won't be any okay. back, back noise. Sorry. And you know what? Let's go. <laughs> we'll go straight to Danielle Page, author of Dorothy Must Die. I don't know where my headphones are, but hi, I'm Danielle Page. Um, I'm only on my book, too. Um, I'm so excited to finally meet Ben. Um, my book is Dorothy Must Die, and its sequel is coming out called Wicked Will Rise, March 31st. I am so excited to be here and to finally meet you. Yay! And I've got the wonderful Corinne Davis here, author of Dreamwalkers. Hi, I'm Corinne. Um, like Ben said, I wrote Dreamwalkers. I live in Pennsylvania. This is my first time actually talking to Ben. This is my first time doing a live show. So I'm a little nervous and I'm really excited. Yeah, do you know what? I'm nervous too. I'm s literally sweating. <laughs> literally. <laughs> As am I. Yeah. You look really cute. Thank you. <laughs> I'm having a live show with you more often. <laughs> so we're going to do. So we're going to now introduce Val, who's the author of the upcoming Bloomsbury book, Hollywood Witch Hunter. Get your place. Hi, my name is Valerie Tejeda. Um, I'm an entertainment journalist, and my debut is Hollywood Witch Hunter. Um, I don't have the book, but yet, yeah, here's a bookmark. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. what I got. And um, like Ben, I'm currently sweating at the moment because I'm incredibly nervous. <laughs> I'm used to interviewing people, but I'm not used to being on this end of it. So it's definitely a new experience, but I'm very excited to be here. Absolutely. I'm so excited <laughs> to have you. And of course, we have Michelle Chris, author of Hexed and upcoming book Charmed. Hello, I'm Michelle Chris. Like Ben said, I'm the author of Hex and Charmed comes out May 26th from Delacorte Press. <laughs> I'm also sweaty. <laughs> and I'm super excited to be here. Yay! And we also have my English buddy. Hello. Hey, guys. Uh, so I'm Taryn Matharu. Um, I wrote... Uh, the Novice, um, and uh, it's the first book in the Summoner trilogy. Um, and I, I started out on Wattpad, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but that's where I kind of uh, built a bit of a following and then um, publishers got excited and, and picked it up. Uh, and it's going to be translated into 11 languages, so um, if you're somewhere out, out there in the world and you're not sure if you can get it, you might be able to, I don't know, it's, it's, it might be one of the languages it's being translated into. So um, yeah, I'm just very excited to be here. I met Ben for the first time. I think it was like three weeks ago or something. Yeah, we had, it was. We, we had lunch friend. together. 
Yeah, and uh, oh yeah, it was just uh, lovely to meet him. He was, he, he was the first person that I'd actually spoken to who'd who'd read my book kind of in person, who wasn't like kind of in the publishing industry as like an editor or an agent or someone. So it was uh, it was really exciting uh, to kind of get someone like Ben's opinion on it, and I'm so glad he liked it. Thank you. Uh, Do you know what? I'm so glad you all could join. And before we start having some questions, please, guys, do ask questions, and we will answer. You know, ask any questions. What are they reading? What are their writing styles like? That kind of thing. But before we do that, I am going to ask my own little question to you guys, and that is, what is the most recent book you guys read? Starting off with dun, 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 Val. Actually, I'm halfway through Daniel Page's sequel to Dorothy Must Die, The Wicked Will Rise. Oh, no, Rise. you're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's amazing. It's completely amazing. So I'm dead serious. I'm in the middle of reading that, and it's, it's, I love it. I'm freaking out over it, basically. So excited for that oh, book. I literally God. just, I can't, I can't wait. I need to get my hands on a copy. I've <laughs> it's actually, incredible. I've You'll die, Ben. I have pre-ordered my hardback copy that I'm ready for. Okay. I've done all my March things, and I'm ready for it. Get it's me. Okay, I'm watching. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Val. Thank you. Of course. What are you read? What was the last thing you read, Jennifer? Um, I recently, like just two nights ago, finished um, reading um, The Infinite Sea by oh, Rick Nancy, ooh, which I loved. That's... And then last night, I just picked up Shatter Me. That's a good one. Loving it so far. Hard to put down. Yeah, Chasmi is. I I really like that. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Okay, uh, we're gonna go to Taryn next. Um, so I haven't read. Uh, um, the last book I read wasn't a YA book. It was called The Humans by Matt Haig, uh, and it's about. It's pretty cool. It's about an alien who comes to the planet and takes over this uh, math professor's body um, in order to kind of. Um, ruin humanity's future, and he ends up falling in love with the idea of being a human. Um, and uh, I won't spoil it, but it, it was really good, um, and it, it really tells you a lot about what it means to be to be human and why it's beautiful to be a human, and mortal as well. So it's yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd recommend it. Awesome, awesome. That's really cool. And we are going to Corinne there next. Corinne, what are you um, recently read? I actually am reading a book called Lilydale, The Town That Talks to the Dead. Uh, it's Ooh. by Christine Wicker. It's a little town about 45 minutes away from here that is um, inhabited by everyone that lives there is a medium. Everyone can talk to spirits. So you, a lot of people go there and they to connect with love died. It's actually wow. a really interesting little town. Hmm. That's it's a really good book. Is it, is it fiction? No, it's a it's it was written by a journalist. It's her experience of going there and talking to different mediums and there's a lot of photographs in it as well of different things that have happened there over the years. Wow, that's really cool. That sounds amazing. I would love to go to a town like that and there's nowhere like that in England because everybody doesn't do exciting things <laughs> and they're all boring. So. <laughs> <laughs> we need more mediums. Really, I think I think I'm correct by saying the only famous medium I know of in the UK is somebody called Psychic Sally. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Michelle, what have you recently been reading? Um, the last book I read, I just finished it a couple days ago, was an adult novel, The Girl on the Train. I think it's Paula Hawkins. Ooh, it's I have, like, yeah. That's... Yeah, in the vein of Gone Girl, it was really good. And the last YA novel I read was None of the Above by I.W. Gregorio. Also, Red Queen I just recently read, um, Victoria Aviard. Yes. Now a number one New York Times bestseller. Yes. Yeah, those are both brilliant. I love them. Yes. And we're going to go with Danielle. What was the most Hi. recent thing you heard? Um, I'm reading Red Queen now, but I, I just finished Scott Westerfeld's Afterworlds, which I loved. It's Ooh. super meta. It's like oh, all about that. YA world and it's a young YA writer and then it flashes back, flashes to what she's writing. I really love it. Oh, that book was absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know if it, for you, but like when I was reading it, were you trying to match the names of the characters in the book to the people that he's friends with in real life? Oh my god, I've met Scott. I've met I met Scott at Yall Fest and I've I I love him and I was just like as a debut, 
this past year, I wasn't a 17-year-old debut, but um, the experience, like, you're meeting all the people, you totally go through all that stuff, and, like, it, it was amazing. Like, And you do totally match up people that you know. It's great. Yeah, that... I um when I, I I thought it was excellent insight into the world of publishing, but also the story which she wrote, which he wrote, was so good. So I loved good. it. Like it could be a standalone, and I thought yeah. that was great. So um, in the book, if you guys haven't read it, it's a girl who goes into the afterworld after a terrorist attack, and she falls in love with like kind of a reaper, and it's just amazing. So there's so two good. stories. It's really great. So good and lovely Jennifer. What have you last read? Well, you already asked me that one. Oh, I've already asked this one. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got everybody? I, I think, think so. I think so. I think that's everybody. Yay. You know what I recently read, guys? Would you like to... So I'm reading this book called The Catalyst at the moment, and it's written by this girl called Helena Coogan, who's a 15-year-old girl no. in the UK no. with a publishing deal no. at Hodder. So she is... She's And this is coming straight out in hardback as well, which is really positive. So, And that's the writing amazing. style is absolutely impeccable you can tell she's an extremely clever clever woman so yes so what um we've we've actually got um a question quickly which i'm gonna answer in a minute from josh um i just want to let everybody know that's watching is um at the end throughout this giveaway i know some authors have some things they possibly might want to give away like bookmarks and such um so definitely keep an ear up for that and tweet them and get in conversation um now let's answer a question josh uh, Waterfield on YouTube has asked, "What was your favourite read of 2014?" And we'll go, we'll go this way. We'll go, Kareen, Danielle, Jennifer, Michelle, um, Taryn, and Val. Okay, are we good with that? Perfect. Sure. Sure. Cool. We'll start off with you, Kareen. Uh, my favourite book was Hyperbole and a Half. Um, Ali Broche. It's based on her blog and all of her hilarious stories that she has. I love that book. I love everything funny and humorous just as much as I love everything weird and scary and freaky. So I love that book. I could not put it down. I read it in like an hour. Awesome. Uh, Danielle? Uh, Lee Bardugo, who I'm obsessed with, um, <laughs> the last book in the, in the Grisha series, I, I, um, it's called Ruin and Rising. It's just so good. It's like one of my favorite series. I don't think I could have written Dorothy if I had, hadn't read her. Like, I just think she's so brilliant. Elsa, uh, goddamn, Lutely, that woman is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I totally I have, like, I have her. three copies of Shadow and Bone, two <laughs> copies of Siege and Storm, and one copy of Ruin and Rising. So good. Okay, Jennifer, yeah, I think I what was your? Two of It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, they're so good though. They're Jennifer, so good. What, She's... What was... Um, I would have to say my best one, mostly, and I know some people are probably going to poo-poo this because it's so it it made it so big. But um, Gone Girl was probably the one for me of 2014, only because of the shock value. It's been a long time since a book has truly, sincerely surprised me. And when you read it and you find out who the characters really are, I was really shocked by that. So probably that one, I think. Nice. I haven't read that book yet, though. I'm I'm I put my hands up. I need to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, what was your most favorite read of 2014? Um, it's hard to pick a favorite. I have so many. I really loved um, The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski, um, Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Um, what else did I love? I loved uh, Side Effects May Vary by Julie Murphy, Open Road Summer, Emery Lord. Those were probably some of my favorites. Oh, Beware yeah. of the Wild by Natalie Parker. Love that book. Oh, lush. And uh, yeah. Terran. So um, I also really liked Gone Girl, um, but it wasn't my favorite. Um, Maze Runner was uh, was I, I hadn't read I hadn't read it yet, but it was uh, I don't know. I just loved the concept of it. It was familiar but unique. Um, it was post apocalyptic, which I really like, um, and the characters were um, were pretty nicely drawn out as well. So uh, yeah, I'd say that was probably my favorite of 2014. Awesome. And Val. This is going to sound a little biased, but I have to say I love Tex and I love Dorothy Must Die. <laughs> Those, honestly, I'm, I'm, obsessed with, I'm obsessed with witches, obviously, so of course I love those two books. And then for the first time in 2014, I read Harry Potter. So I also was obsessed, of course. I read the entire series, like, I don't know, in a week, and 
I loved it. I bought the Bloomsbury edition with the new covers, and so I just devoured them. They were incredible, of course. So. I'm um, jealous of you. I wish I could reread Harry Potter without having read them before and kind of experience them for the first time all over again. Yeah. yeah. No, They're how so did you bad. not read them before? <laughs> I don't, oh, I don't know, but Chris, Chris hasn't read it either. <laughs> We've had this conversation. No. <laughs> no, no, I, no. Mean, <laughs> I have, I mean, I'm a Twilight freak, so I don't know how I never <laughs> got to Harry Potter, even though I know Harry Potter's a whole other league, but I loved it. It was incredible. I'm I'm like you though actually. I it's really really hard for me to pick a favorite book and you know excluding your books because obviously if I didn't love your books you wouldn't be in the live show. But if excluding yours, um something that I read recently was Victoria Scott Salt and Stone. Really loved that one. Mm -hmm. her book. So but do you know do you know if you like which, because me and um, um we were talking about this earlier that in this live show we have you know some books that also in themselves are different genres. So we have, we've got fairy tale retellings, we have dystopians, we have paranormal fantasy, we have epic fantasy, we have loads of different things. And you know, I'm just gonna count now, one, two, three, four and a half people have witches in their books in this live chat. Um, so <laughs> let's, play, let's play a game. Oh, this is, this is the thing, let's play a game. H hands up in this live chat if you are one of the four and a half people who have witches in your book, so you, everybody can know. <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I, um, I think I might be the half. Unless you are. They're not really witches, they're summoners, but still they've got magic. And we, yeah. and right yeah. here we've no. got the wonderful <laughs> Jennifer, who's written a absolutely, <laughs> can I say, fantastic dystopian. The one thing I love about dystopian reads is when they are super like realistic and, and dark, they don't show exactly. any aspects. And Jennifer's book is super, you know, truthful and real, which is great. So hands up for being the only dystopian book <laughs> in the <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So we've got quite a few questions now. Um, <laughs> so somebody just asked a question. Lily Morris asked, do you prefer to write or read? Hands up if you prefer to write. <laughs> Hands up if you prefer to read. Such a difficult I, question. I yeah. It's very close. It's very close. <laughs> I suppose you've got to have like both, don't you, to kind of... Yes. It yeah. depends, it depends on what mood I'm in. There's some moments I want to do nothing but write, yeah. and other times I just want to pick up a book and like just get lost in it, which is amazing. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> I've been writing a lot this year, so I feel like I, I miss reading. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure because I don't know what it must be like for you, but when if you've got deadlines and such, you must be really limited to time. And I suppose you're going to spend time reading books when you have other things to do, like get coffee or see family and <laughs> things like that when you're working on a deadline. So I... I yeah, I found that a lot of things... This year I've read a lot of things for panels. Like if I'm doing a panel, then I have to read the other people on the panel, and then I, yeah. I it's like work, so... yeah. No, I, know, I actually I know. find it kind of difficult to read while I'm writing. Me too. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. I, like to, I need to stay focused on my own story. There's right. yeah. yeah. a lot of books that you miss out on reading because you have to really... Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I try to read things for a lot different than my work. Yeah. I tried to write a book, guys, and let me tell you how it went, okay? <laughs> so, it's exciting. It it started off with a girl, right, in a basket as a baby outside someone's house, okay? The next I like thing it. I know, it's Good in job. a world with different sex like people in. <laughs> and then there was, I'm telling you now, there was parts of Harry Potter in it, there was parts of Divergent <laughs> in it, there was parts of <laughs> Levi Dugo's books in it. I can't write individually, so I accuse you guys for having ideas. Now there's another <laughs> question here. <laughs> Oh my god, girl, if you read my university essay. <gasps> my tutor rang me the other day. She went, you forgot all your punctuation. I went, what? She goes, yeah, you forgot. No, you forgot. No. I was thinking, are you serious? That's, That's what all the editors are for, right? Right, exactly. exactly. I had to pay a lot for my copy editor. <laughs> I should have paid a lot for my copy editor. I'm a terrible typist. I couldn't. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
help the people that have to do mine if I ever do one. But we got another one here from Philippe. Is it, I think it's Philippe there. I think I said that completely wrong. You know, I'm like, I can't say names <laughs> at all. Um, <laughs> it says, when did you start writing? And we'll go again from Corrine, Danielle, Jennifer, Michelle, Taran, and Val. I first started writing when I was really young. I was probably in like seven or eight years old. I used to write plays for me and my cousins to perform on family holidays or family gatherings and they hated me for it because I forced <laughs> them to do it all the time. It was actually, I just did my first YouTube video the other day and that was one of the first things I talked about in the video. I watched that and that's, that's, that is, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I remember you talking about that and that was very funny. I, I, would have, I would have played in your play, okay? Well, I'll write one for you to perform <laughs> then. <laughs> Absolutely. It can be video. <laughs> that, right, exactly. Danielle, when did you start writing? Uh, I think I was like five or six in school we had to, you know, I don't know if you guys do this in, in, in England, but we had these little books that every kid had to write and they would like bind them for you. So it was like a little water, water wallpaper covered like story about a unicorn and a prince and I absolutely thought I was brilliant um, <laughs> at the time and I kept writing. Um, yeah. Awesome. Jennifer. Um, so I'm not really a stereotypical writer, I guess. Uh, when I was a kid, I was a terrible reader, and I was a horrible speller, and my grammar was terrible, so I didn't think writing was ever something I could start to do. And then when I was about 20, I started getting into creative writing. I used to do theater a lot, kind of like how you know, you guys were talking about that. Like it's, It led me into that. So I really didn't start writing writing until I was 25, and it's developed every inch of my life. I write on receipts. I write on paper bags. There's notes on my iPhone and on my iPad, and I make my husband nuts. <laughs> but it's it's probably just in the last five years, really. Awesome. Michelle. I actually am exactly like Jennifer. I didn't start writing until I was 25. I was on maternity leave with my son. Um, writing a book was something I always wanted to do, but I felt like I didn't have enough time or I kept putting it off and saying I would do it later or try it later. And then my son slept all through the night. He napped for three hours in the day, and I had all this free time on my hands. So I thought, if I don't try it now, I'm never going to do it. So. I spent that year writing my first novel, which was like an epic failure, but I learned so much in that year, and I wrote my next novel, which was Hexed. Yay for Hex! yay for witches. I love me some witches, good, bad. <laughs> I love it. Cool. <laughs> next, Taran. Hello. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm blanking the question all of a sudden. Oh, yes. Uh, so I started writing when I was nine. Um, yeah, I wrote a story about an evil wizard and a, uh, sorry, an evil witch and a good wizard and the family who were warriors. Um, and they were, it was called Wizards, so it's like a combination of wizards and swords. Uh, and had these <laughs> bad people in it. Um, and it ended up being like seventeen thousand words, which was pretty good for a nine-year-old, I think. Um, yeah. And I remember my brother; he was two years older than me, and he submitted the first two chapters as a piece of homework. And they thought that he had someone else write it for him, like someone older write it for him. So that was like a good indicator when I was younger that uh, maybe I should write. But um, yeah, I, I kind of had a, um, after like I was nine, I kind of stopped writing for a bit. And then I started up again when I was 15. Um, so, so yeah, I guess I, not, I, I thought that I was young. But you guys, I mean, some of you were like, what, four or five? That's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. And the lovely Val. Oh gosh, I've literally been writing since I could pick up a pen. So at young, oh. young, at a young age, I started writing. Um, I used to do also. I used to make um, plays for my friends and have them act them out with me. And I also used to write plays for my Barbies and would make them oh act them out. I so. <laughs> so yeah, I've been writing forever, but I didn't attempt the book thing until recently. But it's always something I wanted to do. Nice and. You know, I started writing when I was really young. It was such an amazing, moving experience for me. You know, everybody around me thought that I actually was really, like, advanced for my age. So that's why I have numerous book deals. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not to brag or anything, like, these are all mine, but that's fine. <laughs> um, uh, I like this question from Book Addict. Uh, book Addict. <laughs> Great start. How long do you usually read in a day? <laughs> so we'll go. We'll we'll do the same. We'll do the same. Um, do Wait, the well, same. Oh, I missed the question. Sorry. 
the, oh. the question is, how long do you usually read in a day? Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> this is writers here for you, everybody. <laughs> These authors, they, they can't read at the moment. <laughs> no, I pretty much read oh. from the time that my son goes to bed at 8 o'clock until I go to bed. So for, you know, three plus hours a night, I would say. Nice. Nice. I I write me I read maybe an hour an hour a day that's all I don't really have a lot of time right now I'm writing a lot. No. I'm right there with Danielle about an hour just in yeah. the middle of work or journalism work and book edits and everything else it's hard to fit in writing even though I would or reading even though I would love to read more if I could. Yeah, same for me. I almost always, mine's about an hour, unless I get to a really good point in the book and then it turns into about <laughs> three hours and it's two o'clock in the morning and I haven't slept and I have to be up at five. <laughs> so it's whenever I can squeeze it in usually. When I was working, I, I, would, I, would, um, I would read just kind of on my way to work and back and then I'd, be, um, and then I'd have to kind of write. But now I'm a full-time author, um, probably about an hour and a half, two hours a day. Uh, it depends on the book, though. Like you said, uh, Jennifer, like if it's good, it could be all day. <laughs> so it, it varies massively. But I'm reading half bad at the moment, and uh, oh, yeah, that's, yes! that's, oh my god, that was Ben's recommendation. Yeah, that's that's eating the hours away. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> so good though. I'm I'm the same. Obviously, like I'm mainly a reader, so I don't write books like um like you do. And a lot of my work as well, I, I'm, I'm doing a few panels next month, so I've got to be reading books to get ready for that. So I'm, I'm, next month I have a panel at Waterstones Piccadilly with Jennifer Niven, um, David Levithan and Sally Green, so that'll be really cool. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, just, trying to get with those, yeah, he's so good though. <laughs> he's so nice. Kill me. Kill me. And I love <laughs> Sally Green too. I've never met Jennifer Niven, but I've met Sally Green a few times and she's just such a gorgeous person and generally just lovely. So I, but usually I, just, I, I read quite a lot actually. I've been off work this week, so I just, any kind of spare moment I'm reading to get through as many things as I can and shrink that TBR pile down. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be done. So this is a question aimed at you guys again. Um, and this is just jump in whenever you want to jump in. Um, and this is uh, from Chat to Select, and the question is, how long does your writing process take? Uh, I'll start. The first book okay. that I wrote took me a year and a half because I was running a business while I was writing it, so it took a long time. But I can spend anywhere from like a few hours a day to like 12, 13 hours a day. And the long days are hard because the next day you're usually so uncomfortable from sitting at your desk for so long that you can't sit down again to write anymore. <laughs> okay, I'll go next. Um, my first novel, like I said, took a year to write. Um, I was just learning at the time. Um, the next book that I wrote, Hex, it took about four months to write the first draft and a couple yeah. of months to edit. Yeah. Wow, um, that's four months. Yeah. Because Charmed, Charmed was ready really early on, wasn't it? Well, Charmed took about six months. Um, well, I, and I, I, I've had a pretty decent early year, right? That yeah. Right? Yeah. And then uh, my most recent novel, Dead Girl Society, took about nine months. Mm. Um, and I spend probably six to eight hours a day writing. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of coffee. Um, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really similar to Michelle on that. I have another book that I wrote that's not published yet, and it's just collecting digital dust currently, <laughs> and someday I'll get it out, but that one took me about two and a half years to write. And wow. then New World Rising, I started it in like September, and I was already ready for edits in January. It was something that just took my mind by fire, so it totally depends on the series and where my mind is at at that time. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's just how my brain works, and I I usually try to spend it, at least you know an hour to two hours every night writing on the computer. But then of course it's always notes that's continual. I have them at work, I do them in the car, at the grocery store. So it's kind of throughout the day. And now that as you authors all know, now that you throw marketing into that, it's like you have to schedule writing time in with marketing, which always takes a yeah. lot more. Yeah. Very true. 
Gosh, I kind of I write kind of fast or more in spurts. Um, I think with my journalism wor work, I'm literally writing from the time I get up till the time I go to bed. I'm just always at the computer. So when I'm in like book writing mode, I go at it pretty fast. Um, for Hollywood Witch Hunter, I wrote it during Nano Writing Month, so I wrote it in a month and then I edited it in December and started pitching it in January. So that was just a really fast process. I don't know if I would do that again for if other books, but for that book in particular, it was it was written pretty fast. Wow. So I'm very similar to, to Val. Um, I also wrote uh, Summoner uh, for NaNoWriMo, so the first 50,000 mm -hmm. words were written uh, in one month uh, in November, and then um, and then I went, I was backpacking in Australia, so the rest of it was written over the next kind of two or three months in the back of a bus, um, or like in a hostel. Um, so yeah, I tend to write about 1,000 words an hour, uh, maybe maybe a little less. Um, so I'll, <laughs> it kind of depends. <laughs> <Yeah. a lot. laughs> I don't know, it depends on, it really depends though, like if it's a, t if it's a tough chapter to write then it can, be, it can be a lot longer, but in terms of like kind of, if, if I know what's going to happen and um, it's like flowing quite well then it can be that, that long, so I tend, I, I try, I have an aim of writing a thousand words a day, I don't know about you guys if you have like a word count that you aim for rather than amount of time spent on it, but for me it's like yeah, if I get a thousand words a day done, that's pretty good, because if you think about it, you know, that's, that's four books a year, and it's really not that much kind of time to put, put into it necessarily. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I go for. Yeah. I'm one to two, usually uh, around 1,600. <laughs> nice. Cool. My background is uh, soaps, so I used to write, for soap operas, so I used to write a script every week, which was like 80 pages, so for me, wow. I'm pretty fast. Um, but in 80 pages, like, sync, double spaced, uh, like, dialogue, so, um, so, I'm, like, Dorothy was maybe four months, which was really fast, I, I, more time to rewrite, um, and, uh, Dorothy two, a little bit longer, but I was touring and stuff, so, yeah, so I'm fast, but I really like to rewrite a lot, um, because I didn't get that luxury when I was doing soap operas, and it's, like, nice to have the time to really hone in and make things better. Excellent. And you know what, like, again, like, I don't want to brag or anything because, you know, that's not why I'm here, <laughs> but, like, it, I write, like, I kind of, yeah, I write about a thousand words in an hour, so, um, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's about that. So, do you know what, there was this question on here, on Twitter, so for you that don't, guys that don't know, the author's Twitter links are in the bio at the moment in the video, so definitely go and follow them and tweet them and follow them and start a conversation, but i just been tweeted by this girl called Rebecca, uh, Rebecca, nah, I'm going to say it wrong, <laughs> Rebecca, and Rebecca asked, what advice do you all have for someone aspiring to go into publishing slash writing? Hmm. Oh, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> that dog just said, you can do it. You just <laughs> That's good advice, man. Seriously, taking you're you're going to hear a lot of no's because it's a very the industry is is very based on trends a lot of the time, and it's not ever that agents try to be rude when you don't get acceptance letters and things like that. But rejection is part of it, and it should never be discouraging. It should be something that inspires you to work harder, especially when it's a book or something that you wrote that's really you're passionate about. So I guess it's it's being being um being able to stop saying I can't, because you can. You just have to be able to go after it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would also add, read, read a lot in your genre and a lot outside of your genre. There's um, nothing that you could do better than just reading a lot to learn how to be a better writer. Yeah, right. yeah, I definitely. Agree. I think if you don't, if, 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 you're a, if, you're, if you're a prolific reader, then you will have the tools to be a writer because you just understand how books work like instinctively. And I think mm -hmm. people who don't read at all and try and write a book, it's it's going to be really tough for them to write something compelling because they just won't have that instinct that you get when you're when you're a big reader. Yeah. Also, be prepared for a lot of hard work because I think people don't <laughs> realize that it's a job and it's a lot of work and it's it's just something that's very time consuming. It's if you love it, it's completely worth it. I mean, every second of it, but it's definitely work. Yeah, like editing, for example, it takes a long time. That's why a book, yeah. you know, someone you, you have a finished draft, but the book doesn't come out until, you know, a year and a half later sometimes because there's so many iterations that you need to go through. Um, you mm -hmm. know, you need to polish the manuscripts. I mean, obviously, marketing and publishing schedules, but 
yeah, I completely agree with you. It's a lot of work. I think I'd say also, like, I mean, persistence, as everyone says that, but also the ability to adapt and try something different. Like, for me, I started out in one world, like the soap world, and then I moved into the YA world, and it's been a great place for me. So I think being able to try something different and push your boundaries actually helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you know what, again, like, like we mentioned, or for those who have just joined or have joined, you know, throughout, um, we have got a mix here of published authors and indie authors, and I'm very, very, I'm sure that the, the process of getting your book out in that in instant is, is very different, because obviously, I don't know, am I, am I right by saying if you're an indie author, Jennifer and Kareen, do you have copy editors for you, or do you do it all by yourself, or, or how do you get through that? Um, a bit of both. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of both, and, and I'm, I'm lucky enough that um, my mother is actually a very good editor. There's still two errors in my book, which I have find. I've heard of that. Um, but there's, uh, it's one of those things you, I, I rely very heavily on friends and family, and then I also contacted, so you do both. Cool. You cut out a little bit then. Was is that just me or was that? No, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, 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 that, yeah, that happened too. Okay, but we got the gist. It's good. No, that's <laughs> cool. So your mother's an editor. Well, she, yeah, she does a lot of um, editing and writing. So with her, it was great to be able to have her. And then I've also relied on families and friends. I did a lot of beta groups with people to kind of figure things out. And but I've also contacted professionals. You do a little bit of both. You just you take on a little bit more responsibility when you're an indie nice. publisher. And I'm not perfect, you know. <laughs> Kareen, yeah, have you anything to add to that? That's pretty much exactly the same as my process. Did a lot of work for me. She read my book about 450 times. So <laughs> it nice. gets exhausting. The words kind of lose all meaning after a while, but you just have to keep having more sets of eyes look at it to help you really make sure everything is put together the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted also now, before we move into any other questions, I wanted just to give you guys a chance to kind of introduce your book. Um, so, and then after you introduce your book, then I'll just make a, throw in a few comments before we move on to the next author. So, um, I don't know if we wanted to start off with, uh, we'll start off with Kareen again, and we'll go from Kareen to Danielle, Jennifer, Michelle, Taryn, and Val. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. Well, and I'm going to dance in the background with your book. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kareen, well, if you're going to dance with it. I'm not going to hold it up. But <laughs> we I have can a copy. Up. All right, let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, my book is Dreamwalkers. It is, as Ben has told everyone, it has a heavy dose of witchcraft in it. Um, yeah. It spans centuries. <laughs> There's a lot of flashbacks to another time period. And one of, I think, the biggest things about my book is that there's a lot of heartbreak. There's, it's about love and trust and friendship and secrets and really learning to accept who you are without giving Absolutely. anything away. So uh, what I love about this is you literally have dream walkers. You have this girl and her friend who have the ability when they're asleep to kind of astral project in a way into this world. Yeah. Um, and it's there where your story kind of sets off, where you have your main character, Emma, who is kind of walking around and she sees this girl and she's like, oh my gosh, who is, who's this little girl? You know, she's looking right at me. She must be a dreamwalker. But she really recognizes her and she's like, okay, that's weird. She, wake up, she wakes up the next day, you know, normal life. And she is kind of playing on her mind a bit until she's watching the news and she, it actually turns out that the girl she saw in the dreamwalk has been in a coma in real life so she kind of starts her quest off doesn't she where she wants to go and rescue this girl but it, let me tell you it unravels all this kind of family drama lies magic incredibleness you start off at one place place in this story and you end up in this other place which just makes yeah. you <sighs> lovely so yes i really recommend you guys this is available paperback and kindle danielle let me get your book Go. Okay, are we looking at the first one or the second? I guess I'll talk about both. Um, yeah, about both. So Dorothy Must Die. Yeah. So Dorothy Must Die is the story of Amy Gum, and she um, is another girl who lands in Oz and has to fight an evil Dorothy. Uh, and she joins this or the Order of Revolutionary Wicked Witches, which they used to be bad, but now they're good or good-ish. Um, and so she has this mission to take down Dorothy. And then book two, which is The Wicked Will Rise. Uh, 
she's still fighting and she's she's going she's made she's now more powerful she's become a witch and she's discovering new places in Oz and just exploring her power and figuring out whether or not she herself is good or wicked <gasps> okay I'm not gonna lie <laughs> when you were talking about the second book I'm sat here going oh for I'm sorry it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not so... to give anything away guys. no I'm so <laughs> buzzing so I what I love oh, about this Book, and the little like the hum the humeric that's completely wrong the humorous <laughs> parts in it you know and, but also this whole everything's flipped in this world Dorothy's evil and like you said the witches aren't necessarily good but they're not necessarily evil and I absolutely think it's such a wonderful like, idea you know Dorothy for everybody who's watching the original is this kind of like beacon of purity, kindness, sweetness, you know, this little girl with pigtails gets trapped in this world where actually it turns out that she actually isn't very nice and this girl needs to be brought down. So, yes, <laughs> I thought it was just, I thought it was great. So I'm buzzing for this book though. So excited. So excited. Again, well, this I'm book is available. I'm so excited. I need my hands on that book. Oh. So this is available paperback, hardback, and Kindle. So, yeah, well, and, and can I just say... Uh, paper book back is uh, March 31st. Oh, right, um, so that's coming out. So yeah. hardback book, yeah. guys, look at the hardback. Really? Really? Yeah. Isn't it okay. pretty? Design, design work, yes. Ray Chappelle, oh. he's like a genius. Gorgeous. So we're going to go on to Jennifer. Well, <laughs> Hey, so um, my book is New World Rising, which is a dystopian uh, young adult book, and it's really dark, like really dark. <laughs> I think a lot of people, when I had my friends first read it, were kind of surprised. Um, the main character is this um, really hardened girl who, um, wait, let me start over. So the best way to describe it is there's, <laughs> there's um, a wall that's in the city, and there's a utopia on the inside and a dystopia on the outside of it, and on the outside is where she is stuck. And there's five tribes that rule this city, and they are horrible, and they have all of the worst features of mankind. Tribes. And tribes. she's totally alone. See, Ben's got the beautiful pictures <laughs> of all that. Um, and she's left in this world by herself, and she's trying to survive. And um, when she was young, she watched her parents get murdered by one of the tribes, and her mother's dying words for her were to survive. So she spent the last six years doing nothing but that, and um, she's very mistrusting, and she doesn't know who, how to love, really, or take care of anybody else but herself. And it's it's very dark, and it shows some of the the darker sides of human um, um, portrayal of how we can behave. And then you have some characters that show her that humanity is not lost as well. So I think that's the best way I can describe it without giving away anything too much. So good. Now let me tell you, right, in this book, there is quite literally the scene of that everybody thinks about during the end of the world is what would happen, where would I get my books? And she quite literally <laughs> crawls into this, like, bookstore, and she's like, quick, got to get all the books, <laughs> like this, and then, <laughs> and then action kicks off. So again, really recommend this one, and this is available on Kindle and paperback, and the cover, and the best, one of the best features in this book is that it has a map. Guys, I love maps. And it has illustrations of the different tribes. And I don't know, you, Jennifer's just done, um, over on her Instagram, makeup looks and, like, yeah. wardrobe looks for the different tribes. And, I mean, these tribes are horrible. They're disgusting human beings, <laughs> like, each each one of them. I was trying to find a nice person, like, a nice tribe that I would join. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to join a tribe. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. But, yes, thank you, Jennifer. And we're now going to move on to Michelle. Hello. Uh, so my book is called Hexed. It's about a popular snarky cheerleader named Indigo Blackwood um, who finds out that she may be a witch. Uh, so it is sort of a humorous uh, YA uh, urban fantasy. There's a lot of contemporary you know, high school drama as well. And some romance. That is it. Yes, God, and look at this yeah. cover design. So pretty. Look at that. So pretty. And what I loved about this is it is really kind of like a fun yet dark at the same time take on this kind of world about witchcraft. The magic in here is awesome. But what I also like about it is, you know, there, there, when, when 
I, I don't want to give spoilers away, but let's just say there's an event in here that is part of the girl's life, and the way it's dealt with is extremely sensitive, realistic, and perfect. But you've got to read the book to... I don't want to spoil it, but go read the book to find out what that bit is. So good. So, so good. Um, and we're going to now move on to Karen, author of The Novice, book one in the Summer this series. Yes, The Novice, book one of the Summer, Summer the series. Um, it's about an orphan. So it's epic fantasy, so it's in a fantasy world. It's about an orphan who accidentally summons a demon. Uh, this is him here. Uh, it's a 3D printed, printed model of Ignatius the Salamander. Yeah. Um, uh, they're, they're kind of like their, their familiars or their pets, um, and they summon them, and they use them to kind of battle. Um, and he goes to um, a school for mages where they learn how to... Uh, it's like a military academy where they uh, learn how to, you know, harness their powers and how to train their demons. Um, and there's dwarves and there's elves and there's, um, there's a war against the orcs and there's noble houses and there's lots of political intrigue uh, and there's a, t a big tournament at the end. Um, so it's, it's got lots of different elements. Um, so a lot of people have described it to me as it's like a bit a mix of like Harry Potter, uh, Pokemon, Lord of the Rings, uh, Aragon, and his Dark Materials, like all kind of thrown in together, like kind of little kind of tropes of that. So I I don't know if that's if that's true, but you know um that, yes. I kind of wrote a book. <laughs> Let me tell you this book though. So this book, these demons are mostly the best thing in the world. I want a demon, and in the in I, I hopefully in the in the finished copy there's going to be this, but there's a bit. But, but, a bit at the back about demonology and all these different demons and their different levels and you can summon a demon depending on what level of kind of magic you can with, with, withstand in a way yeah. um, and I'll, they're just I'll incredible you. yeah you want this demon like literally so <laughs> an amazing fantasy and I really I really struggled with fantasies especially like high fantasies um, last year and just getting into fantasies this year was awesome reading The Hobbit reading this reading those are cool fantasies so I really recommend this one now we, are, we have this wonderful lady here called Val, okay, guys? Let me just tell you something. <laughs> Val's, book, Val's book is coming out. This is the cover. Can you see it? Can you see it? Hollywood Witch Hunter. Val, take it away. Okay. <laughs> so Hollywood Witch Hunter follows witches and witch hunters living in Hollywood. And um, to be a hunter, one must carry the hunting gene. So if you carry the hunting gene... You're kind of like faster and stronger than the average human, so think like born. And then the witches, um, they have different spells that give them powers um, depending on what kind of witch they are that can either affect elements or do telepathic stuff. So it's kind of like a mix of Mortal Instruments meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer with a bit of X-Men in there. And um, the whole story kind of follows a witch hunter named Iris, who is the first girl to carry the hunting gene, and she's Hispanic, so she has just a bunch of obstacles in her way. So that's kind of the gist of it without giving too much away. <laughs> now, guys, I haven't read this book yet because I'm waiting to get my hands on a copy, but let me I'm tell you what... Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> We will we will hijack this publishing company and steal the copies. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, the one thing which I really love about this book, which Val's mentioned to me before, is the girl on the cover is, she's Hispanic, right? Am I correct by saying that? Yes. Mm -hmm. She's, she, so already we're supporting diversity, which is so important in the YA world because it's such a huge platform, and supporting things like that, as well as LGBT and all these wonderful things which is happening at the moment, is just fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, just coughing with the enthusiasm I'm, I'm, I'm letting out. Do you know, um, I, again, so they're all the author's books. Um, you can pre-order both um, Taryn's and Val's books on Amazon. So they're, And the today, Val's book has just gone up for the pre-order for Kindle. So, you know, mm. I've gone and done that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's what all their books are, and I hope you're excited about that. And, again, their Twitter links are in their bio, so please feel free to go and tweet them. I hope they're going to be completely tidal waved with tweets <laughs> after this and throughout. So we've, um, I'd say we've got just over 10 minutes left, and I'm sorry if we didn't get to your question. There are loads of questions here, um, and it's hard to get through a question when we have six, seven people discussing it. So, but if you have got a question you want 
um, to ask her author personally, do go over to their Twitter. I'm sure they would love to be bombarded with tweets at this day when they have writing to do. Procrastination. <laughs> so I'm actually going to take a question from Twitter because we've been getting a lot there, and there's one person that's been tweeting, um, which I want, definitely want one of his things to be answered, and that is... Um, uh, uh, I'm I'm wrong actually. It's uh it's here. Hold on, I can't find one. Do, 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 do. Um, here we go. If you could write now, this is from me, and then I'm gonna do this song because this one just popped to my head. This is a pretty good one. If you could write any other genre, what genre would, would you write? And we'll start with Kareen, Danielle, Jennifer, Michelle, Taryn, and Val. I would probably write something in. I don't know if this is really a genre. But I guess comedy, I really like comedy. Um, I actually have some other stuff that I'm working on that is in that is funny, more so than anything else. Oh that's that's a little that's a little teaser. Like we've got something coming <laughs> soon. Like keep an eye out, thank <laughs> you, Faith. Mm. Okay. Danielle, once you I mean, I don't know how I know you're in the midst of writing this this epic series. Are you thinking about writing other genres in the future, or is your head just set in the game at the moment? Uh, I'm in the retelling world for a little bit longer, I think, but I love it. Um, I would love to do some sci-fi, because which I'm obsessed with Orphan Black. Does anybody watch that? It's like yes. my favorite thing. It's a you know, about clones. I'm like, I love vampires. I love all that stuff. So I would totally, and yeah, any of that stuff would, would, would be my world, I think. Nice. Awesome. Jennifer, are you going to be converting over to the world of witches after this chat? Actually, I do have an idea for a series that will be of witches, but that's probably about three series out. Um, once I finish with this series, which is a book, a set of three, um, with the dystopian, I'm switching to um, paranormal. I already have the first book in the, uh, in the series written, so that one I need to get out. But I, I'm not writing them at the same time, because we talked about like reading and writing. You don't want crossover with the characters, because they're very, very different. So. Right. Yeah. Michelle, Michelle, my belle, what would you write? Well, my books are urban fantasy, paranormal romance, but I'm actually about halfway through writing a YA psychological thriller, sort of like Ooh. an unreliable narrator in the vein of We Were Liars. So wow. I'm really excited about that. I love We Were Liars. Wow, <laughs> wow though, that because I feel like we need some more of those psychological thrillers over here. Yeah. That's right. And Taryn, what do you write next? Um, so I'm definitely looking into. Uh, well, I've I've had this idea for a while. I actually had it before um, before Summoner, uh, the novice. Um, and it's. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into it because you're not supposed to talk about books you haven't written yet, like in too much detail. But um, it's it's definitely going to be a kind of dystopian, uh, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic uh, book. Um, so yeah, I think I told you about it at lunch. You did. Uh, yeah. You did. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm keeping it. <laughs> no, it's yeah. good. But it, but it would be um, but no, your um, post-apocalyptic science fiction and dystopian um, is definitely something I'd, I'm lo I'm looking into for sure. And I probably read in that genre more than I do fantasy as well. So yeah, I, I need to dig my teeth into that at some point. Yeah, excellent. And Val, I know you. I'm... You're just getting there with this book. It's. Not I know. <laughs> I know. I'm actually working on. Um... A really dark fairy tale retelling. Wow. That I can't say too much about, but it's yeah, pretty cool. much something I never thought I would write, and kind of a really odd idea of two things to kind of put together. But I'm excited about it. I'm excited to kind of work on it more and see where it goes. Nice. And you know what, guys? I'm so honored that I'm going to be the main character in all of your future books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just so thankful. Thank you so much of being letting me live in all these different shoes, in all these different worlds. So I'm thanking you in advance. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I could be a powerful witch or a really strong, I know, let's face it, I literally would not survive in a dystopian world. So <laughs> leave it I say it all the time, I can only survive in a dystopia if I have magic. If you have magic, you can survive. Yeah, but. Mm -hmm. yeah actually, that's a point. I, yeah. I, want magic. I just want magic, generally. This, yeah. Father, yeah. this book I'm reading at the moment has got magic in, which is great. But um, the question here from Jordan Han, I think I might have said that wrong, and this is mostly going to be the last question. 
um, is what is the most stressful part of writing? We'll start with Kareen, Danielle, Jennifer, Michelle, Karen, and Val. The most stressful part of writing. For me, I have a really easy time writing dialogue. I kind of get stuck when I have to be really descriptive about something that I really want people to be able to visualize the way I see it in my head. Some days I will just sit there and stare at my keyboard and play over a hundred different ways I could say it in my head. Um, but dialogue, I have no problem writing that. I could write a whole book full of dialogue only. But for me, just making something go from how I see it to getting you to see it the same way that I see it is the hardest part yeah. for me. Cool. I, and I really do like your dialogue, actually. That was definitely something that stood out whilst reading the book. So, no, that's awesome. And Danielle? Uh, I love dialogue, too. I come from a background of writing dialogue, so that works for me. Um, but I think for me, my big fear, I think, not really fear, but I think it takes me a little bit to break a story until it, it really feels like I'm a part of that world. For Dorothy Must Die, it was creating Indigo, who's this little goth munchkin, and the second I saw her, I knew I could write it. Like, I think you have to have an entry point or something that makes the world make sense, and for Dorothy, it was that. For the next thing I'm working on, like you just you have to find that, that moment where it becomes real. And so I think that's that's always my my issue. And then it's fun. All right, Jennifer. Um, so part of the one I, I guess it's not that stresses me out, but that I am neurotic about is names. I because you ha when you <laughs> write a character's name, you say it, you write it a bazillion times. You're living in this person's like soul essentially. You've created who they are. And if the name doesn't suit the character, because there's been some books I've read where you don't find out the character's name until later, and then you learn the name, and it's like. Oh, that's it? Like, that's his name? <laughs> so characters' names are always really important to me. I've changed mine probably, like, four or five times within the same book before I'm ready to have somebody else read it. Uh, I like the name Phoenix. <laughs> I'm, for, I'm, for, I'm pro Phoenix. And I... Oh, we've lost Val. Oh. We've lost Val. Yeah. Val! Come <laughs> <laughs> I'll, text her. I'll text her and see if she's okay. Um, we'll quickly move it to Michelle. Um, I would say probably the self-doubt. So when you're reading a really good book and you're comparing their finished product with your first draft that you're in the middle of writing at the moment, um, it's hard to get past that. So a lot of the times I don't read while I'm in the middle of drafting because I'll do that all the time. I'll compare this amazing finished product with what I'm working on right now. Yeah. Um, I would say that's the biggest. Right. Nice. And, um, uh, so, yeah, for me, I think it's, uh, I don't know, I, I guess it's uh, pretty similar to, to Michelle's, actually. Um, it's, yeah, I think when you write, a lot of the time you have to trick yourself into believing that you are a good writer, and then at the end you kind of, uh, you kind of take a step back and you're like, okay, I need to read over this critically and be like, okay, kind of look at it objectively. But, yeah, if you, you need to kind of convince yourself of your talent uh, or like that you're good but and whenever I'm reading an amazing book I'm always like oh my god I'm never gonna am I any good am I any good at writing so that's another reason I guess why why some writers don't like to to read when they're like in the middle of like an intense writing period because it also you're just like oh my god this person's an amazing writer and I shouldn't I shouldn't I'm not even a fraction of um, as good as this so yeah I'd say that's um but yeah it's it's definitely like convincing yourself that you're you're a good writer, um, especially when you're a debut and your book hasn't really come out yet and you, you're not entirely sure what people think of it. Um, I think every writer has that. Um, and anyone who says they don't is, is lying. <laughs> there's definitely, a, it's definitely an ang a level of anxiety there, I think. Now, I just... Oh, look, right, so we're getting Val on FaceTime. <laughs> Hello, Val. <laughs> look, you're on FaceTime. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> if I want... I know. Val, Val's... Um, computer just went blank, but look, we've got Val here. She's here, <laughs> and I want to say something for Val because Val isn't here. Val is an incredible new debut, so I really hope you guys go and you know check her book out. It's going to be pretty, pretty big, and she deserves. She's very, very supportive of everybody in this industry and everybody around the industry. She's been extremely supportive for me as well so far. So go and give her support and follow her Twitter account. Um, and you know, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to you all joining the Extravaganza. <laughs>
Thank you um, for having me. Uh, thank thank you so much, Ben. This is so oh, much man. fun. It was awesome. Listen, it guys, I'm going to... I'm going to stop this now and it's not going to go live, but you can still watch this. This is going to be left on my channel for you guys to go and view and watch. And then we are going to have a quick chat just when this finishes so I can say personal thank yous. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this live show. And, you know, let me know if you want me to do anything else with this. And definitely go and check out these awesome authors because they just they just want to want people to read the books and enjoy reading. <laughs> so definitely do that. And thank you so much for watching. And, yeah, See you on the another live show soon. Bye. <laughs>